All right, welcome to another cyber learning video. Today I'll be going through uh, this walkthrough, which is uh, pen testing against a Windows Active Directory machine. And my focus will be on uh, sharing Bloodhound and sort of how it works and what it provides. All right, so uh, first off, we are, we have a set of credentials uh, to a window machine. So we're gonna log into it with evil WinRM. Uh, this will give you a PowerShell on that, um, on that specific machine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open, okay, I already have another one open. So I have uh, two connections there. And what's really neat about Windows WinRM is that it provides you with a PowerShell window on uh, Linux distributions. I'm very used to uh, either having a that type of shell directly on a Windows client or having some kind of uh, framework that will give me the equivalent of it um, on a Windows target. So it's really neat that Windows RM will give, give that same capability within Linux itself. So uh, the first step, so, you know, we're now on a uh, Windows machine. So I'm just curious, everyone system info. Okay, so that's because we're in, we're, we're in a PowerShell. So that's that's not going to give 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 us that. So uh, the first step I'm interested in because I'm interested in using uh, Bloodhound is to uh, upload the ingester. So the ingester is called uh, SharpHound. And um, what that does is that it uses various Active Directory uh, protocols to uh, connect and query all the different active directory machines on the network. And then it pulls all that information back. So that's what Sharp Pound does. So now, so now I'm gonna be sharing some trade craft in terms of how do you go about uh, uploading uh, those files. So I want to change to sort of a different directory here. Okay, so now I'm on the desktop and I, I recreated a temp directory there. So there's temp, okay, nothing there. So uh, first off, I'll be using, uh, da, 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 da. going to my home directory, root 221. So here we have the different scripts that I'm interested in, to, in terms of uploading to that particular target. Uh, specifically PowerView and SharpHound, as I mentioned. So the way I'm going to go about doing that is I'm going to be using the mpacket SMB uh, ser server package. So I'm going to run that. So that's going to create an SMB share on my machine. And then that way I'll be able to, on my target machine, uh, directly access that share to uh, move files. So the argument here is, you know, first, this is the actual Python script for SMB server. And then this is the, the name of my, uh, share, my share. So this is the SMB share that, that I'm gonna be sharing. And then this is the directory that I'm sharing. So the current directory that has all of these files here. So we go back here. So uh, to access that on Windows, you're gonna have to be, you're gonna have to use uh, the net commands in order to mount it. So first I ran net use and so far there's no currently mounted uh, shares. So now I'm gonna mount it. So net use and I believe the syntax was the share name and then I believe the actual path. And then for me, it is 14.10 uh, and then finally the name, share name, which is KFAN. So I execute that, it executed successfully, and then we run net use again. It shows that indeed uh, the, the, the Z drive, drive letter can now be used to access uh, my file share on my, uh, my Kali VM box. So first up is that we're interested in terms of uh, getting uh, the sharp pound file so we can upload it with this syntax. So this is the path to sharp pound on my Kali box, uh, PS1, and then uh, where we're gonna save it on the target. So sharp pound PS1. And so what I find interesting about this command is that 
uh, for uh, local files, right? Uh, you, you use the, the Linux notations of using uh, these kind of slashes and then forward slashes and then uh, for the, the, the path for the, on the target machine, the Windows machine, you use backslash. So I, I find that a little bit amusing. And then uh, due to the, my connection, it's a little bit slow. So in the future, I'm probably gonna upload uh, these files on another um, shell. And then because I already have these files on these machines, then I would, I would just uh, follow through with uh, the demo. Okay, so now that I have this uh, PowerShell file there, now I'm going to actually import it. So then all of the different uh, functionalities, the commandlets within that uh, PowerShell file will be accessible to me. So I can import sharppound.ps1. Okay, so now it's imported. So now we can use, and then if you're interested, I'm just curious if uh, when our RM will actually support the help command. So we're interested in terms of invoking Bloodhound. Okay, it does, it, let me see, it does, yeah, so it looks like help command does work. So what I did there was that I invoked, uh, import this module, Sharphound, and then that made available uh, this function, invoke Bloodhound. So now I'm going to uh, run invoke Bloodhound to uh, collect all of the, uh, the various Active Directory information that is available. And the collection method I'm gonna use is also to use all the collection methods. I know of a few other ones, I believe, such as like log, log on uh, users. And so basically the different collection methods will use uh, different processes of, of, of collection and I'm gonna use all. And then, so one of the things I do wanna point out about this is that when you're, you're running this ingestor here uh, to uh, uh, collect all the information, it's extremely noisy and it's gonna generate a lot of traffic on the network. So be aware of that. Okay, so after running that command, I get this uh, Bloodhound zip, uh, zip file. So what I would do then is that uh, I, I would then run the Bloodhound uh, GUI client itself, and then I would upload the zip file, and then you would get a lot of the nice features of the Bloodhound GUI to analyze uh, uh, what you have there in your Active Directory target. So uh, to do that, let's see here, I am going to jump to my other VM where I have uh, the Bloodhound GUI loaded and running. So a uh, quick comment about uh, getting the, the Bloodhound GUI to work. So the dependency there is you have to get a Neo4j, which is a backend da a database. And my experience with, with setting up Bloodhound is that uh, when I was trying to do it on my Windows 10 machine, it had a lot of different Java versions. And so I was a Java hell in terms of figuring out uh, how to configure Java correctly to get it, uh, Node4j working for Bloodhound. And so that was a nightmare. But when I did it uh, within Ubuntu, it was extremely straightforward and, and much easier and I didn't really have any problems. So, uh, okay, so this is the Bloodhound GUI, right? A fresh Bloodhound GUI. So then what I need to do was that I ran the ingestor on the target machine that created a zip file. And then I move the zip file over here into this other machine. And so now I'm gonna upload that, that data. So it's processing the file right now. And so it's churning through, through that file. And so, and then, it, and then information will start getting populated. We're waiting it uh, to finally be finished. Uh, what, one of the concepts here that Blenhout uses is that it has all of this uh, data information about Active Directory and it's going to use uh, a lot of the cutting edge theory in, in graph theory to uh, present some very powerful visualization for an analysis to uh, figure out uh, possible vulnerabilities with, within the architecture. So it completed. And then so right here in the database info, right? We see it found 31 users. It found two computers, 
right? Different group sessions and ACLs. So uh, first off, because I, I, the user I use was this uh, S, SVC L, L Fresco. So I basically type that in and then click on it. And right here, it, it, it populated on the graph, that node, right? So now I have SVC L Fresco. And if I click on it, over here on the left, it's going to bring me to the node info and all the information about SVC Alfresco, which is a user account, right? So, so far, right, it found one session that this account was uh, associated with. And then when you click on that, right? So if, if there's blue, you can click on that and then that will update the graph, the graph view. And so what it shows me is that this user Alfresco has a session on this force machine, right? So yeah, so we see some other interesting within the domain, GPOs. And so one of the big things, okay, so let's, let's check out the group membership. So, okay. So right here, right, it shows Al Fresco has members to these two groups. And if you hit the control button, it will show you um, the labels for each of these nodes. So in this case, that user is a part of the group's uh, service accounts and domain users, right? And you could also uh, zoom out and zoom in as well. And then you could also move the, the nodes around as well. So really amazing uh, a GUI to interact with the different nodes and edges, right? Um, one of the really important points I do want to bring up about using this tool, though, is that uh, your ability of using it and understanding it will be dependent upon how much knowledge you have about Active Directory. So the more knowledge, the more knowledgeable you are about Active Directory, the more you'll be able to make sense of sort of all of these different uh, objects, all of these different nodes, and all of this different information uh, with, within the interface itself. That's really important. And hopefully as I go through these de uh, de demos, I'll be able to sort of flesh that out, all the sort of foundational background knowledge that you'll need to have an active directory to make sense of, of this all. So my, okay, so uh, so uh, really quickly, right? I showed you accounts and then I also want to show you uh, uh, computer nodes, right? So we know that there's this forest node from that the, set, the previous session view. So I could type in that forest, click on it, and then it'll show me this forest node. And I'm going to click on that node. And then when you click on the node, it's going to update on the left, the left uh, pane here, all the different in information that the ingestors were able to pull uh, uh, from the target. And so that's another really important concept to understand here, right? So blood, this Bloodhound session that I'm interacting with, that's based on all the information that was gathered within the zip file that I uploaded to the Bloodhound GUI. So this interaction with a GUI it's not live with the actual target domain as things are changing there. It's based on the, the zip file. So it's a snapshot in time of the, the state of the Active Directory when I ran the gestures to create that zip file. So, okay, so right here, right, you see, you see all the various information about uh, this particular node. Uh, the, what, this is really, this is like one of the really interesting fields is local admins. So if I click on, on the explicit admins, it will show you all of the uh, accounts or all the different objects that will have administrator access to that particular machine. So in our case, it is the user administrator, and then it is the groups enterprise admins and is the group domain admins. So notice, even though these are all nodes, they, rep they represent different types of objects, right? So the top one, that's an administrator and it will show up as a, a green, a green icon. And then the two bottom ones are groups and then they will show up as this uh, yellow icon, right? So really important uh, details that, that you need to know to make sense of it, right? So there's that. And then the other feature I wanted to show is that showed me a local admins, uh, local, uh, sorry, that showed me, where? Domain, okay, so, so because I clicked on that domain admin group, 
it, 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 it updated to show me the domain admins on the left pane. What I'm interested in is the actual computer itself. So I click back on Forest, and uh, uh, what I did to get this view was I clicked on explicit admins, and then you could unroll that as well. So then it will then it will show you the connections, right? So in this case, by unrolling it, it shows you that, and then you can move these uh, these icons as well. So it shows you that uh, the administrator is a member of Enterprise Admins, and and through that chain. That is how we, that's one of the reasons it has ad administrative access to the force besides a direct, besides this direct edge as well. So that will give you a breakdown of, of, of uh, some of the, the edges that gets grouped together in some of the views, which makes it much more uh, viewable. So that's great. So uh, what I showed you so far is some information about users and a uh, group membership here, we could click on that, right? That member is a, a, uh, a part of the two groups at enterprise domain and domain controllers. Uh, the next powerful feature I wanna show is the ability to uh, query uh, the, different, um, the different information that, that is available. So one of the very powerful ones is this, but before I, I get there, I do wanna show, okay, I'll, I'll get back to that. But one of the very powerful ones here. So right, I, could, I clicked on queries. So you can uh, create custom queries. I do, I'm not knowledgeable enough currently. I, I'm still relatively new to Bloodhound. So I'll, I don't know sort of how exactly that works, but a lot of these pre-built queries uh, can give you a lot of information. So let's find all the domain admins right here. Okay, so all the domain admins. Okay, so there's that. Uh, find shortest path to domain admins. So and then, okay, so when I click that, it asks you, okay, which, which domain admin group? In this case, it's this domain admin group that I'm interested in. So a very important concept for those who are new to Active Directory. So uh, for those who are, are new to that, you might be used to running Windows sort of just as a desktop machine by yourself. So in that case, you will have a local accounts, right? So on the local machine, your local computer itself. When we're talking about Active Directory, there's this concept of a domain. And so within the domain, you have your own a complete set of accounts that are associated with the domain in contrast to the uh, local groups on, on, on your machine. So those are completely two different uh, sets of, of, of groups. Uh, groups that are associated with the domain, and then groups that are associated with your, your local computer. So that's what th this domain ad. So the reason I say that is because if you have access to either local administrator to your own local machine or the the systems, the the sys the the local system account, which is very powerful on your own PC, that doesn't mean you actually have the domain administrator, which will give you complete power over the, the complete uh, do domain in Active Directory. So that's why in, in a lot of cases when we're dealing with an Active, uh, an active Directory environment, we wish to uh, privilege escalate from whatever type of accounts we currently have to a domain administrator. So that's sort of a little bit background on that, right? So when I, I clicked on finding that shortest path to the domain admin. So number one, right, is giving us all of this information, right? So many nodes, so that could be overwhelming. But what we're, and then, and to make it more readable, you can, you know, move these nodes around. There's probably a button here to sort of make that more clean, but I, I'd probably something to do with a layout type maybe. Right, there we go. So yeah, so then this creates a sort of a director graph. So things are a little bit more re readable. So the two things we do have access to, right, is this account on this machine. And what we want is we want domain admin. This, this, is, this is the ultimate goal here, right? So one of the cool things we can do there is that because we, ha we have access to this, this uh, account, we could mark that as own, mark that user as own. And then, you know, this is the ultimate target here. So after I mark my account Alfresco as an own one, I can then run shortest path from own. And that will really simplify this, this graph here, right? So then it, will, it, then it will show me the paths that I, I will need to take to get to 
uh, the ultimate goal of domain administrator here. And uh, what I can sh can talk about here is that, so this, share, this shows, okay, Alfresco is a member of this account, which is connected to all these other accounts. And one of, one of the, uh, and then the, the final account that's really interesting, for, or actually the final permission that is really interesting for us or, is this permission, which is actually a group. So this exchange windows permission has the ability to write DACL. So that's this edge here, write DACL. And with that, we'll be able to write different, we'll be able to write the access control permissions for uh, different objects on, in Active Directory, which will then finally give us the ability to become part of domain administration. So that's what, that's what this graph actually shows us, right? And uh, the other big uh, important part that allows us to do that is because uh, this Alfresco is a part of the accounts operator, has the generic all permissions uh, to uh, this, this group right here, the exchange window. So, you know, I'm throwing out a lot of these different terminologies and that can be sort of very overwhelming and very sort of challenging to make sense, uh, make sense of. And you know the only way to sort of get better uh, 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 and to sort of grasp all these different concepts is to slowly slowly play with these kind of systems, and then also uh, do a little bit of research in terms of okay, what's right right DACL? So how did I, I get to this field? What what I did there was that I right clicked on this edge and then I I hit I hit the help command. So again, this shows you you know the power of Bloodhound, it's just how much information it gives you, right? So, um, you know, these are the four different tabs here and it gives you a little bit more details and also references. So you could learn more about what actually, you know, right DACL is, right? So there's that. And then the other one I really wanted to show here is generic all. So let's see what that's about, right? The member of this has generic all permissions and it shows you how do you go about abusing this. And then, you know, from a red team perspective, Right, what, what's, what, what does it do? So it says here, it depends on the objects, how for each our document. Okay, so it, so it says uh, you can click on, on more information from edges to sort of be aware of, of OPSEC issues. And I think the last thing I, to make this video not too long is um, to click on, on this exchange. And uh, I wanted to show, okay, the group, the different group members here. So let's, okay, so exchange windows permission is a part of the exchange trusted subsystem. So that, that's sort of some, a membership relationship. But with that, I'm going to now uh, in this video, in a future video, I'm going to show you how all the information I got here from using Bloodhound ba based on that knowledge, I'm going to then go on back on the target system and leverage that in terms of changing the DACL and then find giving myself a DC sync permissions. And then from that, finally get domain admin privileges on, on my target machine. And then the other thing I wanted to show was that how do you go about getting all this rich, powerful information manually through, uh, through manual processes, specifically either using the Active Directory module for PowerShell or using PowerView, right? In this particular case, I use the Bloodhound and Gesture to um, uh, uh, execute and then query all the different subsystems to create the zip file and then I finally run Bloodhound, which is a very powerful automated process. But I think to sort of improve your skills in penetration testing and red teaming, you should also be aware of how that works manually. So, so that's why I wanna go through that manual process. So with that, I will end this video.